Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Kansas City Royals. We are at the beginning of the 2033 offseason. Uh, the 2033 season was mixed results for the Royals. A uh, great regular season with a 104 and 58 record. We integrated a ton of young and rookie players into our lineup. So those were the positives. Uh, the big negative is that we were bounced in the first round of the playoffs, although we had home field advantage potentially throughout the playoffs. We lost to the eventual World Series champion Los Angeles Angels 3-1 to in the ALDS. Uh, since the season has ended, uh, longtime manager Byron Nichols has retired. Our pitching coach has retired. So we've got a couple of openings on our staff that we need to figure out. Still have high expectations with ownership, want us to win the championship in the next two years and continue building towards a dynasty. And we don't really have a ton of money to play with this offseason. Um, so it's going to be a um, pretty interesting uh, task ahead. We don't have a lot of money for extensions, and the one big decision that we do have here on the first day of the offseason is whether or not to exercise a $10 million option on uh, starting pitcher Gordon Graceffo. Profiles is an above average-ish starter, but honestly, if you look at his stats over the course of his career with a 96 ERA plus and a 99 FIP minus, he's almost been the definition of average. Um, coming off a 12-8 and 8 record this past year, but he did put up a 4.54 ERA. Right now we've got um, Ben Borgman and Caleb Lagerwell locked into the 1-2 and two spots in our rotation. But we've got a decision to make on Graceffo, who is our number 3 starter, our, or our number 4 starter. Our number 3 starter last year, Zach Jacobs, coming off of a career year at age 32, is headed to free agency. And then our fifth starter, Ricky Venasco, is still recovering from a serious injury. So uh, we have some holes in the rotation. And although Graceffo is not a well above average pitcher, he is a competent, solid, proven major league starter. Uh, so I think we're leaning towards potentially exercising that option. Now, if we do so, given the limited money that we do have, uh, that would absolutely take us out of the running to potentially bring back uh, Zach Jacobs. But quite honestly, um, Zach J Jacobs is looking for over $20 million a year for four years. Um, he has been a better pitcher than Graceffo over the course of his career with a 114 ERA plus and a 91 FIP minus. But like Graceffo, he's fragile. He's only a year younger than Graceffo. I almost feel better with a one-year $10 million deal with Graceffo than I do potentially giving Zach Jacobs four years $80 million. But before we focus on the decisions around the players, we've got to get our coaching staff intact. And I've spent a little time thinking about what we want to do and I think I'm going to promote Bobby Crosby, who has uh, three years left on his contract, our bench coach to manager. Um, he's not exceptional, but he's good with development, good with mechanics, good with handling aging. He's got an excellent re reputation, um, kind of fits in well with the crew here, and he's got good relationships with everyone on the team. Uh, so I think that it's kind of the path of least resistance. Um, to promote him to our manager and then to backfill those other spots. Um, I'm going to make one move that's going to hit our, um, potentially hit our um, team or our staff cohesion a little bit. I'm thinking about promoting uh, AAA manager Chris, Chris Carter to the bench coach. Uh, he has a decent reputation, but he's legendary with development, excellent with mechanics. He's expected to also have good relationships with the Kansas City players. Uh, his personality is controlling, um, so that is going to cause a little bit of a conflict with Bo Jackson, who is also controlling, but Bo, for some reason, struggles with controlling people. But Bo 
is also 70 years old and going to be 71 years old next season. So I think Bo is likely to retire. So I don't after this uh, coming year. So although there may be a little bit of tension with those two, um, I don't think it's going to be a long term issue. So we are going to appoint Chris Carter to the bench coach. And then last but not least, we need to bring up a pitching coach and um, Daniel Moscos from AAA uh, may also be in line for a promotion. He's good with development mechanics and aging. He's excellent at teaching pitching. Uh, his personality being personable will work well with others on the team. Um, he's only expected to have an average relationship with the Royals players, but excellent good and average relationships with all of the pitchers a little uh little more strained with the non-pitchers but that's okay had thought about um bringing up tony mcknight um that would be another controlling personality though um you know there is a thought to do it um it's really just going to make Bo's last year on the team a little less comfortable um, and McKnight would struggle a little bit with our scouting director, but the relationships with the scouting director and team trainer are less important uh, from my experience than the ones with the actual coaching staff. So um, that is still an option. Regardless of which one of those I bring up, um, that will give me the ability to give a promotion to Yimi Kepeo Rodriguez, a uh, really good young pitching coach who's 46 years old. And then I can, after that, promote another 46-year-old pitching coach with a lot of potential, Scott McGregor from rookie ball to A ball, to hopefully uh, keep him happier. And I have decided I'm going to go with Tony McKnight um, to the promotion. He's a better coach. He's excellent at teaching pitching, outstanding development, excellent mechanics, and good with aging. Um, Moscos is kind of good, good, good across the board. Now I'm going back and forth because Moscos actually has requested a promotion. I'm actually going to promote Moscos to pitching coach, which is kind of what I thought. He's still a very solid pitching coach, but because McKnight hasn't requested a promotion yet, um, I think it'll be better to promote Moscos up. So we're going to appoint him as the pitching coach in Kansas City. Um, you can see that opens up a lot of vacancies here at the higher levels of our organization. Um, so we can hopefully promote a lot of uh, pitching coaches up throughout the organization, keep them a little happier and hopefully more likely to um, stick with the organization, even if they're not quite at the major league level yet. Uh, looking at the staff roles, um, Cohesion is ecstatic, um, still have a pretty good coaching staff. A lot of these guys work well together with those personable personalities. And as noted, um, the only kind of tension on the staff is um, between our new bench coach, Chris Carter, and first base coach, Bo Jackson. Um, but again, Bo is going to be 71 years old this upcoming season, so I think he's likely to retire. So I think we can handle one year of tension between those two. I don't think it's going to have a huge impact on the team. All right, so we've promoted a few people throughout the organization and also made a few offers for some spots. So our uh, hopefully our coaching staff um, in the minors will be set similar to our coaching staff in the majors in the not-so-distant future. Uh, player development, just a quick look. Um, minor league system has fallen a bit to be ranked fifth out of 30 overall. That, to a large part, is driven by all of the um, top prospects, particularly among our infielders who have... Um, been on the major league roster for over a year at this point and um, no longer our prospects. They are just uh, young major league players at this point. So now the big decision is what to do with that 10 million option on Gordon Graceffo. Taking a look at the starting pitchers who are going to be available. Uh, we've talked about Zach Jacobs, who we know is looking for about $20 million a year. The front line top top end guys, Logan Henderson, Jack Billings, William Santos, all looking for around twenty five to twenty eight million dollars a year. Blake Workman only looking for sixteen, but 
I don't know that he really has the stamina to be a top starter, although you can see he did pitch 212 innings and 33 starts for the Mets last year, so um, he gave them a lot of respectable innings, um, but he's 36 years old, he's fragile, um, don't know that I want to chase him. Andrew Baker and Garrett Clark are a little younger, but looking for even more money. Rosny Contreras coming off of a torn flexor tendon in his elbow. His demand is a little lower, but he was fragile before that and now has the uncertainties associated with an injury. Travis Garnett looking for $20 million, similar to Jacobs. And then uh, Brandon Williamson is looking for $11 million. I don't know that I'm all that excited about his profile compared to that of Graceffo for um, a little bit more money. Um, you know, Williamson over the course of his career has been a little bit below average with a 91 ERA plus and a 105 fit minus. So um, I think I'm going to exercise the offer on Graceffo, even if we free up a little money in our scouting and development budgets, which we'll do temporarily at least, just to kind of see what the money situation looks like. can see that only frees up, you know, another five, well, obviously it freed up $5 million when we took $5 million out of the budget, or uh, it freed up $4 million when we took $4 million out of the budget, but... If we save $10 million on Graceffo, and we won't actually save $10 million, we only save $9 million because we've got a $1 million payout on him. That puts us into the mid-teens with the money we have. I just don't know that we're going to be able to bring back somebody for that kind of money that's better than Graceffo. And at least now, we've got a little money to spend on top of Graceffo. So um, I'm not fooling myself. I don't view him as a frontline starter. I think he's a fourth or fifth starter on a good team, but if you've got a, a fourth or fifth starter who's kind of a solid average major league pitcher, I think that's helpful. And the issue with our team is right now he would slot in as our number three starter behind Borgman and Lagerwell. That's not optimal, but um, with all the uncertainty around Venasco and the fact that we almost certainly are going to be losing Zach Jacobs, I think we just want a little bit more certainty in the rotation for this upcoming season. And uh, Graceffo is a solid, consistent pitcher. So we are going to go ahead and execute the option for Graceffo to come back. And now the next thing we need to tackle is our arbitration eligible players. And most important on that list is Alex Vasquez, a uh, key player for us, uh, looking like 14.4 million is kind of the number. Um, that's about what he's expected in arbitration. I'm sure he's going to be looking for more than that. Uh, we would love to just get him figured out. Yeah, he's looking for 18.2. See whether he'll go for the 14. He wants some bonuses too for MVP and All-Star. I don't think he's going to win MVP, but we'll give him some money if he does. Yeah, he'll consider $14 million, so uh, that is good for us. Um, Bryce Hubbard definitely want to bring back. Um, don't have any any thoughts that he's anything more than kind of an average-ish major league pitcher at this point. Um, he's been above average with a 132 ERA plus and an 81 fit minus. It's only over a sample size of 273 and a third innings, but I guess it's um, a little unfair to say that he's um, only an average pitcher based on his performance. But looking at his profile, pretty average-ish. Um, I do like the fact that he could start for us in a pinch, um, and his arbitration number is not excessive. Um, 1.6 million, he'll I'm sure be looking for a little more than that. He's looking for 1.76. Let's see if we can get him for 1.5. Yep, he's willing to think about that. And then the, the more difficult decision is Dylan Lesko, who we traded for from Houston um, midway through this season. He was fine for us with a 3.86 and 23 and a third innings pitched. The issue is he's looking for about $2.5 million next year. Um, really good stuff. Meh movement, not great control. He's fragile. 
he has been an above average pitcher over the course of his career. I don't love him, but we're going to have at least one hole in the rotation and probably three or four holes in the pitching staff overall. As you can see, we're losing Alexis Diaz, who we traded for from the Dodgers. We're going to be losing Zach Jacobs. We're going to be losing Mackenzie Gore, and we're going to be losing Matt Cronin. So we have um, several important pitchers that are not going to be with us next year, and we don't have a ton of money to um, bring on new talent. Obviously, if we let Lesko go, that'll open up $2.4 million that's put aside for him right now. But I think it probably makes sense to um, try to bring him back. So we're going to make Lesko an offer also. See if we can get him for $2.25 million. I think that's probably a little bit too low. Yeah, maybe $2.3 million. He's willing to think about that. So, so we've got offers out to Hubbard, Lesko, and Vasquez, the three arbitration-eligible players. Cronin, I checked in with him. He was looking for, I think, over $7 million, $7.3 three million a year for three years he's 36 years old we just don't have that kind of money right now uh, junior Marin is looking for 4.8 million um, he has been a respectable player for us you can see his career kind of started off with a bang um, he was averaging about 29 homers a year the first five years the first four years of his career and then these past two years he's only hit 29 homers combined been a very averageish offensive player and with the fact that we've got um, the youngsters Soto and Zavala coming back into the outfield as well as Avear who's going to be um, promoted this coming year I think kind of that last corner outfield slash the backup outfield slots are kind of full I can't see paying Junior Marin 4.8 million when that's about all the money that we've got for free agents uh, Zach Jacobs, check in with him one last time. I think he's looking for 20-ish million a year. We will make a qualifying offer to him. Kind of hope that he doesn't accept it, but obviously if he came back, um, although that would cripple what we're able to do in free agency, it would basically allow us to bring back the entire rotation that went uh, 104 and 58 this past year, so it wouldn't be the, last, the worst thing in the world. Mackenzie Gore is kind of um, an interesting choice. He's not looking for a ton of money. 1.68 million um, that's actually less than he made this past year over the course of his career he's been a bit above average but has kind of struggled the last couple years has not gotten a lot of playing time though he was kind of a lefty specialist for Byron Nichols and you can see he's only pitched 40 innings over these last two years perhaps his usage patterns will change um, with new manager in town um, I like the fact that he does have enough stamina and he does have four pitches he could potentially start for us in a pinch. I don't want to pay him $1.68 million, um, but I'm willing to see if he'll go for $1.4 million. And he's willing to think about it. So, um, if we get to a point where we don't want Gore on the team. A one-year contract at $1.4 million, we should be able to get out of that without too much pain. At least that gives us another arm um, as we kind of head into the offseason. But even with Gore, Lesko, Hubbard coming back, um, we're still going to have a couple holes to fill in the um, pitching staff this offseason. And not a ton of money to fix them. So I think we kind of got a plan. We'll see what happens with the arbitration offers. We'll see what happens with the offer to Mackenzie Gore. Uh, we'll hope that Jacobs refuses a qualifying offer. And that's kind of it. Um, I don't think unless there's a huge bargain when we get to February or March, we're going to be doing much in terms of everyday players. I feel like the 13-man um, roster, barring some injuries, is kind of almost settled at this point for next year. So we're not going to have a ton of money, but when we do head into free agency in a few weeks, um, I think the focus is probably a left-handed arm for the bullpen, maybe a starter, maybe a closer. Um, we need 
we need multiple arms for the pitching staff. Uh, can probably get away with just bringing in two if we were able to get, um, you know, if we bring in two arms, at least one of them needs to be a lefty, I think. And uh, if we can somehow bring in a closer, a starter, um, to be those two pitchers and one of them's a lefty, that would be a big win. Um, but we're going to be shopping in the bargain basement, so um, we're we're not going to be bringing in any real top frontline people with the amount of money that we've got to spend. But hopefully, we can get some bodies on board through free agency, and the trade market and the Rule Five draft are also options that we'll be looking at over the coming months. And as we try to free up a little more money. Um, probably going to think about moving on from Aiden Harris. Um, he played not that much for us this year, but he did hit 341 and 88 at bats, but we don't have a spot for him on the major league roster. He's going to be out of options. Um, not the best personality in the world. If we can pick up something for him in trade, um, would love to do that if um, we just have to wave and DFA him to get him off of the major league roster. We'll do that also. And there's honestly not really much out there for Harris when I look through these players. Uh, most of them are also players who are out of options. Um, David Eason from the Mets, I don't think he ever is going to have the control to really be a major league pitcher. Uh, you can see he's been in double-A the last couple years, and walks have been a problem with uh, more than a walk an inning, or more than a walk every two innings in both of those seasons. Um, does have three option years left, though, so if we can um, at least get the optionality by adding him into our minor league system, and we'll clear $700,000 off the books in terms of what Harris was going to be making next year, uh, I think it's worthwhile for us. So after trading away Harris, we also waived and DFA'd uh, Yeifer, Perdomo, and Heiselbero, who were uh, pitchers who were up and down between Omaha and Kansas City over the past several years. Uh, they both have no options left, wanted to get the um, guaranteed money off of the books um, with those major league contracts. So you can see we've got a little bit more money to play with now. Um, It's going to be an interesting offseason because we don't have the money to fit all of our needs um, through free agency. So perhaps we'll end up being a little more active in the trade market than usual. And there's always the hope that something interesting sneaks through to us in the Rule 5 draft. And the contract signings have started coming through. Hubbard signed the deal to avoid arbitration. We extended Mackenzie Gore for a year. Uh, Dylan Lesko avoided arbitration. Most importantly, Alex Vasquez avoided arbitration. Fans are pleased that Vasquez is coming back. And then you can see we've also made offers to a bunch of our minor league free agents, um, bringing back a bunch of them across the system. So positive to have them. Uh, and then also uh, manager and pitching coach agreed. So I think um, that should... Um, we still have a pitching coach opening um, in high A ball. So one opening that we still need to fill in terms of the personnel. But um, salary arbitration is done. Um, we've made the offers that we're going to make. Um, we'll see what happens when we get closer to free agency with Zach Jacobs and the qualifying offer we made to him. And we're going to be in award season very shortly. Don't think we're going to have any MVPs or Cy Young Award winners, but uh, hopefully we'll have some gold gloves, some silver sluggers, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if Araghetto Laziosi uh, or any of our other rookies, how many votes they get for Rookie of the Year this season. And the calendar has flipped to November, and the gold gloves were announced. Gordon Graceffo, the pitcher who we brought back, won the uh, Gold Glove Among Pitchers. Bobby Witt Jr., once again, the Gold Glove for third baseman. So, uh, obviously not a... Uh, prefer that your pitcher is winning a Cy Young Award or being an All-Star as opposed to now two-time Gold Glove winner Gordon Graceffo, but uh, 
it's better than nothing and as you can see Bobby Witt Jr. has a lot of hardware this marks his eighth gold glove award at third base he's also a seven-time all-star won a couple world series won a couple of um mvp awards in the playoffs rookie of the year and a silver slugger last year so a lot of hardware for the 33 year old uh, bobby witt jr's mantle we've got an offer trade offer from the mets um, they would send 28 year old lefty jesus bibbs to us um, he's a lefty he certainly has um, the stamina to start don't love the fact that that third pitch, his changeup, is uh, adequate at best. Um, he did put up a 3.41 ERA in 226 and two-thirds innings last year, tied for the league leading game started. So um, he's been productive, and he signed for next year at just $3.1 million. So not a horrible pitcher to add for the back end of our rotation, potentially. Uh, the issue is that they um, want Marone Pere Ramon Perez, which is kind of fine. He certainly profiles as a reliever. But they also want Dan Keough, who's still one of the better pitching prospects in our system. He split last year between rookie ball, A ball, and high A ball. And you can see 193 ERA in rookie ball, 212 in single A, and then 4.61 ERA at high A ball. So the soon-to-be 23-year-old still definitely has some work to do, but um, he's durable as far as his injury proneness. Um, I don't really want to get rid of the, the second-round pick from back in 2028 yet. I think um, he potentially in a couple of years could be better than what Bibbs is today. So... Not a horrible offer, but uh, not one that I'm thinking about executing on right now either. Certainly would think about maybe making an offer for Bibbs later in the offseason, but uh, not going to include Keo in the deal. AL Reliever of the Year, uh, Matt Cronin, our soon-to-be ex-closer, did finish third in the voting after uh, having a pretty solid year with 40 saves and a 2.64 ERA. Uh, silver Slugger, the Royals left out of the voting this year. No Royals winning Silver Sluggers this season. Probably the month-long injuries to both uh, Alex Vasquez and Bobby Witt Jr. Um, definitely hurt their chances. But tomorrow we will find out the Rookie of the Year award. And very interested in seeing what the voting for that looks like, even if we don't um, get Rookie of the Year. Ooh, Arge only three players got votes. Crazy. Um, our guy, Arageto Laziosi, got six first place votes, uh, hit 313, third in the batting race. Alex Hinojosa, uh, 35 homers, 99 ribbies, and a 270 average. Had a really nice year as a right, field for the a right fielder for the Astros. And then Sean Jacobs for the Twins. Um, 296 average, 5 homers, 61 ribbies, um, led the league with 13 doubles, led the league with 66 stolen bases. Um, he is the uh, winner of the award. So um, thought it might be a little more split, and there might be a few of the other Royals, you know, notably a Tony Fonseca um, perhaps getting some votes, but was not to be the case. And looking at the AL Cy Young Award voting, uh, Javi Tamayo, 17-10 uh, and 10 record, 3.22 ERA and 311 strikeouts, uh, wins it for the Mariners. Zach Jacobs finished fifth in the voting for our Royals. On the NL side, Jorge Pozo, 17-12 uh, and 12 with a 2.97 ERA and 355 strikeouts in 263 and a third innings for the Braves wins the National League Cy Young Award. And moving on to the MVP awards, Raul Carmenati for the world champion LA Angels uh, center fielder. Big year, 310 batting average, 31 homers, 115 runs driven in, wins the MVP award over teammate Vlad Guerrero Jr. Uh, you can see Bobby Witt Jr. was down there in the voting, and Alex Vasquez did get a vote also among the Mariners. 
And then in the National League, Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, we'll check in again on just how incredible his career has been. Another MVP award for him, 306 batting average, 63 homers, 152 runs driven in. Um, just a stupid career with the number of times he's led the league in home runs over in the National League. 34 years old, and he's already at 738 career homers and 1,800 career ribbies to go with that 300 career batting average. Um, just an incredible career for Tatis Jr. at this point. And with the awards now out there, and that is a that's the seventh time MVP award for Tatis Jr. So uh, at 34 years old and the way he's playing, pretty likely that he's going to retire with the record for most MVP awards when all is said and done. But now it's just a matter of um, not finding out what happens in salary arbitration because we don't have any players there, but um, just making sure that Zach Jacobs uh, declines that qualifying offer and then um, getting ourselves ready for free agency. And not a big surprise when he was uh, looking for four years at $20 million a year, but Zach Jacobs has declined the QO to become a free agent. Uh, free agency filings are tomorrow, so let's move forward and see who's going to be on the market. As I've talked about, we're probably not going to have the opportunity to really add any of the top-end talent. Um, Jack Billings, starting pitcher. Edouard Julien. First baseman, starting pitcher Winston Santos, Kettle Marte, Carlos Correa, Luis Urias, Alejandro Osuna, our former left fielder, right fielder actually, Travis Garnett, Jerry Holguin, and Adonis Guzman are allegedly the top free agents who are going to be out there this year. International free agents, anything interesting there? It's like a lot of older players and or not that good players, unfortunately. Oh, Ricky Zavala's looking pretty good. Guessing he's going to be looking for... Ooh, and Kai Shek Chang. Always risky after what we experienced with Shitong Kin. But I do like the potential of Kai Shek Chang. Um corner outfielder who looks like he could have a bit above average bat not looking for a ton of money we don't really need a ton of offensive players so it might be a luxury but he's somebody to think about and then ricky zavala 26 year old shortstop again uh middle infield with the influx of rookies we had this past season is not a big need for us but uh he has got a really good glove and potentially a really good bat but He's also looking for $30 million a year, so that's probably not going to work. Looking at the starting pitchers who did make it to free agency, you know, largely the group that we thought was going to be there, um, so no real surprises. Most of them looking for some pretty big money, so probably not a lot for us to do there. With the changes that we've made, we do have close to $12 million potentially for free agents. Um, fan interest has bumped up to 99 thanks to re-signing Alex Vasquez. Uh, but keep in mind that we did scout our, we did cut our scouting and development budgets a little bit. Um, if we want to get them back to 22, 32, 33 million, that's going to come close to cutting the money that we have for free agents in half. But we've got time to decide on that. Uh, looking at player development, we don't need as much um, for our draft slots. Um, now that can definitely change because hopefully we will be getting a compensatory pick for Zach Jacobs eventually. But we'll cut that down to $8 million because million, obviously after the brilliant season we had this past year, we're going to be picking at the end of uh, pretty much every round, I believe. Um, probably we'll need to bump that back up a bit when we get the money from... Um, or we get the picks for losing Jacobs. Um, but at least now we've got a little money to play around with. I don't think we're going to chase after one of those top top end starters. Um, looking at all relievers. 
some pretty high-end talent, uh, although a lot of it is older with our former closer hater, um, Morgan McSweeney, Felipe Tejeda. Plenty of pitchers to think about, but you know, no one that we're going to go crazy trying to bring on to the team, especially for the money some of those top-line relievers are looking for. And then looking at the batters, um, as we talked about, an aging Carlos Correa, Ricky Zavala, the uh, import from Cuba, probably the top two hitters on the market. Um, if the... I don't know, I'm kind of intrigued by Kai Shek Chiang. We don't really need another outfielder. But he's got three option years left. He's not looking for a crazy amount of money. And he certainly profiles as someone who could be an above average major league hitter as a corner outfielder. Not an exceptional player, but a decent player. I think the first thing we're going to do is just get an updated scouting report from Travis Lee on him. Um, see if maybe we can refine his abilities a little better. But um, a little intrigued by him, even though it's not a big area of need for us the needs this offseason are definitely figure out a way to improve and enhance and expand our pitching staff whether that's through um trade or free agency that's what we'll be focused on figuring out in our next episode until then thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day